Thank you, Wangde. Um, so this talk uh, will be about an online matching problem where uh, in addition to the uncertainty uh, due to the online nature of the problem, we also have to deal with um, uh, a stochasticity that uh, is realized after you make your online decisions. And uh, we'll try to understand how using path-based analysis, you might be able to get strong guarantees for uh, this uh, class of problems. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Vineet Goel from uh, Colombia. All right, so let me start with a very classical setting in online matching, uh, which is the online bar partite uh, matching problem uh, by Karp uh, Wazirani Wazirani, so that we are all on the same page. Um, so the uh, problem is as follows. We have uh, a bipartite graph, a set of offline vertices, which are these uh, blue nodes here. Um, and we have the other side of the graph, uh, which are, uh, the vertices arrive online. These are our arrivals. You can think of the blue nodes which you know a priori as your resources. So the online side uh, vertices arrive one by one sequentially. When a vertex arrives, you see all the edges incident on that vertex. And the goal in the problem, of course, um, uh, is whenever a vertex arrives, uh, or rather the decision you have to make is that whenever a vertex arrives, you either need to match it to one of the um, resources that uh, might be available and have an edge to the arrival, or you reject the arrival. The decision that you make is irrevocable and you need to make this decision without knowing anything about uh, what future arrivals might look like. So the goal uh, is, of course, we want to find a matching uh, that uh, is a maximum as, as far as we can uh, over all uh, arrivals. And now in order to really understand uh, whether one algorithm is doing better than another algorithm, uh, we use offline algorithms as a benchmark where an offline algorithm knows the entire graph, all the arrival, uh, arrivals in advance. And then we hope to find an online algorithm that uh, over all possible instances of these arrival sequences or the graph uh, still has a good performance gap uh, with this offline algorithm that has the additional knowledge uh, of knowing the entire graph in advance. Um, so for this class of problems, roughly speaking, it turns out that the greedy algorithm that naively just does what's best for the current arrival often gives you already a competitive guarantee of half. And uh, really the crux is in trying to understand whether you can do better than this naive greedy. Um, and Karp Vazani was only showed that you can in fact get one minus one over E with a very nice and simple uh, algorithm. Um, and that also that it's best possible. So now this uh, online matching and its generalizations have been broadly applied in uh, various uh, application domains, uh, one of which is online ad allocation. Uh, so while the real application, of course, is much more sophisticated, let's uh, think about a toy version of it and that will allow us to understand uh, why we should think about stochastic rewards. So we have all searched something on Google and typically our search results are accompanied by these ads. Um, so while there is much going on behind the scenes, um, one aspect is as follows that uh, let's say I go online, make a query about pizza delivery. Uh, now for uh, Google wants to display some ads and for a specific ad slot, let's say it's trying to choose between Grubhub and Domino's. Uh, suppose that it makes the choice of displaying Grubhub. Now um, there is some probability that I click on this ad. Let's say probability P, I click on the ad and then this advertiser Grubhub pays Google. Um, and with the remaining probability, nothing happens. I don't click. Um, so uh, in this pay per click type of models and online ads, uh, the uh, platform only gets paid for uh, actual clicks. But these clicks are realized after uh, the decision to display the ad was made. Uh, so this uh, kind of a thing actually appears in several other applications of online matching, like ride sharing, for example, a driver could choose to accept or reject um, a match that is offered by uh, the, the ride sharing platform in crowdsourcing personalized recommendations and so forth. Um, so this prompted uh, Meta and Panigre to study online matching uh, with stochastic rewards where basically in addition, whenever you see an arrival, in addition to the edges, you have an associated edge probability. And if you were to make uh, a match, let's say T to I, then T would accept this match with probability T I T. And this is an independent coin toss, uh, independent of everything else uh, that has happened. Um, so now if there is a, an actual success, if the match uh, that you offer to T goes through, you get a reward, unit reward. If it's a failure, uh, nothing happens and your resource I is available for future rematches. Um, so the model that we look at in this work is a slight generalization. 
uh, we say that actually if uh, a match successfully goes through, you don't just get a unit reward, you get a reward that could depend on the resource that was successfully matched. So it could be a reward RI for a resource I being matched. The goal now is very naturally to maximize the expected total reward over all arrivals. Um, and we might think a priori that yes, then we want to compare against offline, perhaps a similar story, but uh, it turns out that there is a subtle thing in terms of thinking about the offline here that uh, we should spend a couple of minutes on. So um, in the case where all probabilities are one, that is the car Fazrani Fazrani case, you have this nice offline given by an LP that's integral. Um, in the stochastic case, however, there are two unknowns. One is of course the graph structure, meaning all the edges, the probabilities of the edges, uh, and the other is the realizations of uh, rewards after possible matches. So if we naively think of an offline algorithm that knows uh, these realizations of all possible decisions, as well as, of course, the graph, then that's an ineffective benchmark. We can't really hope to get um, any uh, realistic compari comparison against such a benchmark. So um, a more natural uh, benchmark is given by what are called clairvoyant algorithms in the literature. These algorithms are offline algorithms that know the uh, entire graph in terms of knowing its edges and probabilities in advance but they learn the realizations of any decision um, in real time. They are not known uh, to the algorithm a priori. So to be more clear, um, uh, Clairvoyant does not know the outcomes of any decision it might make, and the decisions Clairvoyant makes are also irrevocable. And you might also be wondering, uh, well then does Clairvoyant, or because it knows all the arrivals, does it need to make decisions in the arrival order or can it choose the order in which it makes decisions? Um, so that part really um, either is fine. Typically, we restrict the clairvoyant to make decisions in the same uh, order as the arrivals, but uh, the results in this paper, as well as in past work, all go through if you consider the uh, more powerful clairvoyant that can uh, make decisions in a different order. All right, so our contributions uh, can be summarized in this table. Um, uh, there, is a, there are a lot of things on this table, so let's start first with this column. Um, and what we basically show are improved results um, under certain additional assumptions on the probabilities. So the first uh, special case uh, which we introduce is what we call the case of decomposable probabilities, where we say that each edge probability PIT decomposes as PI times PT. Um, you might like thinking about it as follows instead that you have a matrix of probabilities, roughly speaking, this matrix is rank one. And in that case, we show uh, the best possible guarantee of one minus one over E. And why is it best possible? Because um, this uh, case of decomposable probabilities includes the case where all probabilities are one, which is the classical KVV case. Um, when probabilities do not decompose, but are quite small. Um, and uh, the reason this uh, small probabilities case has been interesting is because it has applications to certain online ad contexts where these probabilities correspond to click-through rates, which can be small. And in this case, we show an improved guarantee of 0.596. Um, what is not uh, known is whether you can beat greedy. Greedy is the one that gives this half in general for arbitrary probabilities. Previously, um, improvements over half were known for the special case where all rewards are identical. Um, and this case here for which previously there was a result known is the case of identical probabilities, uh, where, uh, which is included in this decomposable case. Um, a couple of more things about this 0.596 result. More precisely, this uh, guarantee looks something like this, where T max is the maximum magnitude of the edge probability. So if this is something like 0 0.01, the constant here is roughly five. So the guarantee looks something like 0.95 times 0.596, so to speak. And the intuition for why this uh, case of small probabilities is somewhat easier than the fully general case is because uh, uh, with this assumption on smallness, you can turn certain summations in the analysis to integrals and you basically analyze a continuous process or approximate uh, continuous process. All right, so now with that, in the rest of the talk, I'll start with a uh, fundamental limitation of previous approaches and that will motivate um, one of our main results. I'll focus mostly on the decomposable uh, probabilities result and then uh, conclude and mention some uh, future directions. So, um, uh, in past work, uh, thinking about clairvoyant, which is a non-trivial DP, um, uh, a nice sort of upper bound on clairvoyant that you might alternatively compare to is given by this expectation LP. It's very crisply stated, and um, uh, it also connects back to the fact that in the deterministic case also there is still a nice LP. Uh, what is happening in this LP is that basically you are turning the stochastic reward process into a deterministic fractional consumption process. 
uh, whenever you, uh, this XIT decision variable, for instance, if it's one, it's saying that you're actually consuming just a fraction PIT instead of involving a stochastic process. So naturally in this relaxation, there is a significant gap between LP and clairvoyant, uh, but actually more strongly Meta and Panigre showed that even for the case of identical probabilities, if you are comparing against the expectation LP, you cannot hope to get any uh, result better than 0.6 to one. The reason that number is interesting is because it's smaller than one minus one over eight. Now, since we will show more strongly for decomposable probabilities that you can get one minus one over eight, that would naturally lead you to believe that we get a tighter bound on clear one. And indeed, uh, that will be one of the main things. Um, all right, so uh, the main uh, sort of uh, ideas that I want to focus on are in the analysis. So in the interest of time, I won't go into the algorithms, but I'll just say that the algorithms are fairly natural generalizations of algorithms that have been known in the past, and they um, are scalable due to the algorithms in the past being uh, scalable as well. All right, so the high level idea for the analysis um, comes from this beautiful paper by Devanur et al. Um, and what uh, happens in the analysis is that you have your offline, or in this case, clairvoyant, you have an LP upper bound on it, further dual upper bound on the primal, and you have your algorithm out. So in order to analyze that, what you try to do is to uh, find a dual feasible solution such that uh, alpha times the uh, reward total reward of alpha matches the dual objective. If you succeed in doing that, then weak duality gives you a one over alpha competitive ratio guarantee. Um, we will basically attack this point and give a stronger prime. So previously in our expectation LP, we had these uh, capacity constraints that any resource I is um, sort of uh, fractionally used, but overall you only use one unit of it. Um, and we will simply be uh, very straightforward and uh, actually do something that sounds almost like brute force. We will say that this constraint should be satisfied on every single sample path and not just an expectation. So Omega here denotes sample path over these uh, independent indicator random variables. Um, each indicator random variable for an edge IT basically says that T would accept I if you made that uh, match. And since these are independent, we just write a sample path in this form. Okay, so the path-based formulation is basically given by generalizing all the constraints to a path-based constraint. And I'll say something more about this non-anticipativity business. What this is saying is that if you have uh, two sample paths, omega, omega naught, which are identical up to time t, and you are thinking about the decision at time t, uh, then on both these paths, the decisions are at time t need to be identical because these paths are identical up to that point of time. So what this relates to is the fact that clairvoyant does not know uh, the realizations of these stochastic rewards uh, from the future. And that is why this non-anticipatory. All right, so you might be thinking uh, with this kind of primal dual business, now there are exponentially many constraints, exponentially many dual variables. Does the analysis not become intractable? Um, so actually we can sort of massage everything so that the analysis is still very clean. And let me just get to the main thing that uh, sort of gives us more power um, uh, through using path-based formulation here. So, um, so sort of succinctly putting the dual constraints that we get from path-based uh, formulation, they look like this, where this is really the key term. Um, this expectation of a product of theta i on sample path omega and this indicator random variable uh, for edge it conditioned on knowing the past. Um, and in this expectation, when you're trying to set dual feasible solutions using the algorithm, you can actually correlate the definition of theta i omega with the indicator random variable, um, which is the randomness that's present naturally in the problem. And this correlation allows you to amplify um, this particular uh, summon. On the other hand, if I said I will not correlate, uh, what ends up happening is that this uh, product decomposes as the product of two expectations, which is actually exactly what the uh, dual of the expectation LP is doing. So effectively, by looking at something path-based, you are able to correlate your dual, which was a degree of freedom that the expectation LP did not afford you. And by correlating the duals, you can actually amplify this product and therefore find a, a dual feasible solution, uh, which uh, you could not do with uh, this, uh, uh, I guess, more stricter demand that only works if things are independent. All right, there's also this uh, decomposability assumption that we make. And really the main idea behind what this gives us is that uh, it gives us a unique preference order over all resources uh, for arrivals. Uh, so for, as an example, if let's say there are two arrivals, T and Tau, that are both interested in I as well as J, and T um, finds that expected reward on I is larger, 
then tau will also find the same. And that's thanks to decomposability. So these two things that correlation um, business that path-based formulation allowed us along with decomposability gives us that tight result for decomposable probabilities. Um, for non-decomposable probabilities, unfortunately, it turns out that uh, just using the path-based formulation is not enough. So um, I'll say a little bit about it uh, right now and I can uh, answer some uh, more in questions uh, if there are any. Uh, the main idea is that uh, we will now have a new set of linear conditions. If we find a feasible solution for this linear system, then we have a one over alpha guarantee. Um, but this new set of linear conditions is LP free. So we don't look at some primal dual. So we don't have to worry about the tightness of any LP relaxation. But uh, the way this new set of linear conditions uh, relates uh, to the um, um, clairvoyant is by directly depending uh, or involving certain actions of the clairvoyant inside the conditions. Um, so uh, at the end of the day, we still find a feasible solution to this linear system. And uh, this is also a path-based analysis that gives us um, the guarantee for uh, small probabilities. Um, so now with that, uh, let me summarize the main things uh, or main takeaways uh, from um, this work. Um, uh, perhaps uh, the biggest takeaway that I suspect might be useful to you in other problems is that if you're thinking about an online problem where you have a stochasticity that manifests after you make your decisions and you want to compare against clairvoyant, uh, then path-based analysis might uh, be fruitful. And in particular with this idea, we were able to show a tight guarantee for decomposable probabilities, which was impossible if you were using expectation LP. And uh, for uh, these heterogeneous but small probabilities, we gave a 0.596 uh, compared ratio guarantee using an LP free, but uh, still path based analysis. And in terms of future directions, um, perhaps the most intriguing, intriguing problem is uh, what happens if you have no assumptions on the edge properties where nothing better than a half is known. Um, more generally, you can think about the online assortment problem, which is a broad generalization of stochastic rewards. Again, nothing better than a half is known in general. There are some asymptotic tight results. There. And um, a more immediate question perhaps is a tight result for the small probabilities case. Um, here actually it might be possible to beat one minus one already. Uh, that bound doesn't hold anymore if you're comparing against clear one. Um, there have also been some further developments since uh, this work appeared online. Um, uh, recently in independent work, Huang and Zhang um, showed a 0.576 result for small probabilities against the expectation LP, which remember is a tighter bound uh, on the clear one than the clear one. Uh, so while this number is smaller, they compare against a stronger benchmark. So it's sort of incomparable. Um, and also they make a stronger assumption that the probabilities need to decrease as the number of resources n increases. Uh, for our result, we don't need the probabilities to decrease as n increases. They can just be some small constant for any n. Um, and in work that is not stochastic rewards, but uh, allocation of reusable resources, uh, which is joint work with uh, Vineet Goel and Garuda Yangar, we generalize this path-based certificate idea to also get optimal competitive ratio uh, guarantees. Uh, that's it. Thank you.